If someone you love was going to climb a mountain, one you knew had claimed lives in the past, would you worry about whether or not they'd had proper training? Would you worry about whether or not the equipment they were going to use had been tested to make sure it was safe? Would you worry about whether or not the people helping them knew what they were doing? Would you worry about those things? Perhaps you would. But what if, as well as all that, you knew that what they'd be climbing was completely vertical and smooth, without any hand or footholds, so that they were totally and utterly reliant on equipment and people that they might know nothing about? And that if they fell, they'd be falling into water, or even worse, onto a hard metal surface. How much would you worry then? Boarding and leaving a vessel that's underway or at anchor can be a dangerous business. There are fatalities and serious injuries every year. That's why safety is so important. And the current shift towards contractor and subcontractor management makes it even more important to be vigilant about your own safety and standards and those of others. Where contractors or subcontractors are involved, there is only a limited opportunity to control or even influence the way launch operations are conducted. Companies and individuals may simply have a poor awareness of what can go wrong and just how dangerous it can be. And this kind of complacency often goes hand in hand with poor operating practices. Have you ever heard someone say, we've been doing it this way for years and we've never had an accident? Until now. So, who is this program for? First of all, it's designed to help anyone who will have to board or leave a ship by launch, and anyone who has to help them, to make the process as safe as it can possibly be. Next, it's meant to help the contractors and subcontractors we use to operate more safely. It is designed to make sure they are clear about what we want and what we demand. And finally, it's there to remind anyone who has previously received training in this area of some of the key points. There are only two basic questions you need to ask. Firstly, what is the person boarding the vessel going to have to do? And, if something were to go wrong, What's the worst that could happen? You need to look at every area and assess the risks. And you can start with the person who will be doing the boarding. Are they fit enough to climb a vertical rope ladder easily? Are they scared of heights? Are they on any medication? Do they have a good sense of balance? Do they suffer from motion sickness? If you're not happy with the answer to any of these questions, the individual in question should not be allowed to board. And if you're the one who's going to be boarding the ship, the same applies to you. You know your limitations better than anyone, and it's up to you to make others aware. Remember, the person concerned may feel pressure to go through with boarding, despite having strong personal misgivings. They might be nervous about being seen to question authority or show so-called weakness. 
There could be cultural issues to take into account here. Make it clear that it is completely acceptable to decline to board at any time, from the planning stage to when you are at the foot of the ladder itself. Next, consider the whole situation the person who's boarding will find themselves in, starting at the beginning. Before you even look at the launch that will be used to travel out to the ship being boarded, begin by looking at the condition of the jetty and the boarding area in general. Can the launch come alongside the jetty? And if so, will passengers need to use steps or a permanent ladder? Is it safe? Are there any trip hazards? Does it look slippery? Is the transfer onto the launch safe? Will there be a gap between the jetty and the launch, perhaps because of fenders? Next, look at the launch itself. What kind of condition is it in? Are there enough sturdy handholds or railings to use? Has the deck and transfer area been treated with anti-skid paint? And there are other features you should check out before the journey even starts. For instance, equipment that must be on board, working and in good condition. Is the lighting on board good enough to be safe when boarding takes place at night? And what about safety equipment? For instance, are there life jackets, life rafts and life boys? Is there a suitable ladder to allow someone to climb from the water onto the launch? Is there a search and rescue transponder, firefighting equipment, a working VHF radio, a first aid kit and so on? And does this equipment work? Is it in good condition? Who operates the launch? A supplier, normally the agent, is one thing, but particularly if it's operated by a subcontractor, how confident are you about the way the launch is operated? Does the launch have a suitable number of crew? Do they seem to be competent? What are the inspection and maintenance standards like? The next step in the process is preparation. During the whole boarding process, including the journey out to the ship, there must be radio communication between the ship being boarded and the launch. The captain of the ship will, with the agreement of the captain of the launch, make the final decision about which side of the vessel should be used for boarding and will confirm that a lee has been made. At that time, the launch captain will also let the ship know what height the ladder should be above the water. If the launch is approaching the ship from the opposite side to where boarding will take place, if the ship is underway, the launch must cross to the correct side by passing the ship's stern and never the bow. However, if the launch captain decides that the weather conditions have become unsafe, boarding or disembarking must be postponed or abandoned. There must also be good quality communication between the deck hand on the launch and the launch captain. And the same must hold true for the launch crew and the officer or other crew member supervising boarding on the ship's deck. The method of communication that will be used between them must be agreed in advance. Radio communication is preferable, especially from a distance. If visual and line of sight communication have to be used, check that everyone understands the appropriate signals. The preparation for boarding should include other actions by the ship's officers and crew. The ship will make sure that the right kind of ladder is used. What is appropriate will vary according to the conditions, the type of ship being boarded and the equipment available on it. The three most common arrangements are a pilot ladder, an accommodation ladder or a combination of the two. 
The combination ladder is the arrangement the IMO recommends and is generally considered the safest on ships with a freeboard of more than 9 metres. Finally, the crews of both the ship and the launch must be ready for any emergency. In addition to making sure that the launch has the right safety equipment on board, make sure that the crew is adequately trained and drilled in emergency procedures. If anything goes wrong, it could be you in the water or hitting the deck of the launch. Safety for the passage to the ship being boarded starts on the jetty. If necessary, the launch crew will move the launch to another point on the jetty so that the passengers can board safely. Before boarding the ship, any electronic devices such as phones, laptops or pagers should be switched off until passengers are in an area of the ship they are boarding where it is safe for them to be switched on again. When the launch reaches the ship, its crew must check that the ship is fully prepared for its arrival and a ship's officer is on deck ready to supervise boarding. A personal flotation device must be worn at all times during boarding. Either the launch or the ship must supply one before the transfer. You must never wear anything, an item of clothing or a backpack for instance, on top of a life jacket. Remember, it is completely acceptable to decline to board at any time from the planning stage to when you are at the foot of the ladder itself. If you do not wish to go through with boarding, simply tell the launch captain or crew member. Only one person will be allowed to board at a time. That is because if two people were on the ladder, for example, and one of them lost their footing, they could take the other person with them as they fell. If you have any luggage with you, a backpack for instance, you must not wear or carry it while boarding. The ship's crew will lift any bags on board separately after the transfer of all the personnel that will be boarding. The launch crew will call you forward when it is time for you to board the vessel. Make sure that you have handrails to hold on to when going forward and use them. Do your own visual check of the boarding arrangements. Does everything appear to be in good condition? Are any of the steps broken, dirty or slippery for instance? If it's a wooden ladder, have any of the steps been painted? Is the pilot ladder properly secured to the ship's hull? And if you're boarding using a combination arrangement, are the pilot ladder and accommodation ladder secured to each other? Is the lower platform of the accommodation ladder horizontal? If it isn't, it is not safe to use. Make sure that you can't get trapped under the accommodation ladder or between the launch accommodation and the ship. Use the outboard side if you can. Is the pilot ladder flush against the hull of the ship? If it isn't, when you step onto the ladder, your feet will push the bottom of the ladder towards the hull. You will then be at a considerable angle to the vertical. In that situation, a rising wave could cause the launch to strike you. And the consequences of that could be extremely serious. Listen carefully to any instructions you are given and follow them straight away. While waiting to step onto the ladder, hold onto the handrail or other handhold provided. Remain alert at all times. Keep your eyes on the ladder. Don't look back to see what is going on. The launch crew will be taking account of the movement of the launch and timing the signal to board accordingly. 
When you are given the signal, immediately step onto the ladder and climb five steps as quickly as is practical. This will take you clear of the launch. Keep your body close to the ladder at all times. This will help keep it stable and make it easier to climb. Only move one hand or foot at a time, so you always have three points of contact with the ladder. If you're using a combination ladder, climb high enough so that your feet are slightly higher than or on the same level as the gangway. That's because it's much safer to step down rather than up. Move one hand or foot at a time onto the accommodation ladder. Remember about keeping three points of contact at all times. Climb the gangway using both handrails for stability. Once you reach the top of the ladder, the deck crew will take you through the formalities, including checking your ID. Once everyone who is boarding the ship is safely aboard, any bags will be lifted onto the deck. That's the boarding process. But remember, when the time comes to leave the vessel, bear in mind that leaving a ship may be more dangerous than boarding it. As before, if anyone who is due to leave decides against doing so, this is perfectly acceptable. Simply tell the captain or crew member that this is the case. And if there is any key information about you, your luggage, your fellow visitors or colleagues and so on, make sure that the relevant crew member or officer is aware of it. The safety rules remain the same as for boarding. Don't carry luggage, stay alert and so on. When you reach the bottom of the gangway, if you're using a combination ladder, step across moving one hand or foot at a time. Once on the pilot ladder, remember to keep your body close to the ladder while climbing down. Don't be tempted to look behind you as you might overbalance and fall. The launch crew will be watching you to make sure you are safe. But you can look down if you need to check where you are in relation to the bottom of the ladder. Do not lean back while doing so. As you near the bottom of the ladder, listen out for instructions from the launch crew. When you are given any instructions, trust them and follow them immediately. The crew will generally steady the ladder for you and assist you from the ladder to the launch. Grab the handrail as soon as you have transferred from the ladder. Never try and second guess what you have been told by the launch crew. They are trained and experienced in this operation. Don't hesitate, doubt, or try to improvise. You could be risking your safety and the safety of the launch crew. When you are reboarding the launch, never step onto the railings of the launch, only the deck. It is the only safe surface. And never try to jump. Remember, if you do fall in the water, the crew is fully trained and drilled in recovery procedures. And they will have you out of the water as quickly as they can. Next we're going to look at a couple of factors which can make boarding a bit more complicated. To reposition the vessel even when it is at anchor. If the ship doesn't have a bow thruster, then the main engines may be used to give a temporary lee. But this takes time, so the ship must be given sufficient notice of the launch's arrival Quite often, the ship will not try to make a lee until the launch is very close. This allows the maximum amount of time for boarding before the lee is lost. Boarding should not take place during the hours of darkness if it can be avoided. But if there is no alternative, additional precautions should be taken. Where possible, anyone who will be boarding should be wearing clothing of a very light color. 
if possible, high visibility clothing. Retro reflective tape, which must be in good condition on the personal flotation device, is an absolute minimum. The accommodation, working area and personnel transfer areas of the launch must have adequate lighting to make sure that people embarking or disembarking the ship can see clearly. The launch should also be fitted with a movable searchlight. If you are boarding a ship at night, wait until the launch's deck lights are on and the crew is using the searchlight to illuminate the ladders before going on deck to board. Also, the ship should use a spotlight for the area between the pilot ladder and the bottom of the accommodation ladder, as well as suitable lights for the accommodation ladder. To any instructions you are given, and follow them straight away. Keep your body close to the ladder at all times while climbing. Remember, leaving a ship is more dangerous than boarding it. Never try and second guess what you have been told. Don't hesitate, doubt or try to improvise. And if boarding has to take place during the hours of darkness, take additional precautions. Follow these guidelines and you will keep yourselves and others safe from harm.